sponsors of Dave's Tackle Box. Good evening, everybody. Remember me? I'm Dave. And this is Dave's Tackle Box on the 21st of July, 2013. Please. And here we are. So, it's Sunday. And uh, I've been missing for a couple of weeks, I know. And I'm going to be missing for a couple more weeks after this. I'll explain everything. But first, just over my shoulder there, you can see Mr Dawn. Hello. And uh, if I do sort of things with this camera to do that, and then sort of do... That will both be on the screen. I hit all the right buttons in the right order. My... God, you're a phenomenon. What are you? It's just a fluke, isn't it? It's because I've forgotten how to screw it up. Yeah. Having been off air for a few few weeks. And it is this... I missed two weeks on the trot. And I should probably explain why, shouldn't I? I yeah. can hear a strange noise in my earphones. But I think oh. it is a genuine strange noise coming from the garden. <laughs> uh, yes, OK, so uh, two weeks ago I had to work, unfortunately, which uh, is a Language. bit of a pain. Yeah, I know, I know. And uh, and then last week, I think a lot of people know actually because there's a lot of people asking me if I got my luggage back. Well, the airline I was using, who shall remain nameless, Swiss, uh, decided to send my luggage somewhere else. So last week on Sunday, I was rushing around trying to buy some clothes to go to work in. Uh, I did get it back, but not until I got home. When was that? Day before yesterday. It was the first time I'd seen my luggage in a week. But I did, I got everything back, so thank you for all your kind wishes. And even for the unkind ones. There we go. And you've been sort of a bit hit and miss the last week or so, haven't you, Mr Dawn? Yeah. So. It's uh, abscess makes the heart grow fonder, don't you? <laughs> I, I, I did hear that you got no sympathy whatsoever. I was watching the Haze Hour earlier. Yeah, yeah, not, not, not from the two people who I thought would have been most sympathetic, no. <laughs> I'm thinking, you know, Kat and my wife, if I'm going to get sympathy anywhere, it'll be those two. Did I? Did I help? Goebbels would have got more sympathy. I'm not kidding. Um, but, yeah, you know, Keith was, was very solicitous. And uh, the dentist, I have to say, was marvellous. But for the amount of bloody money he charged, he wanted I was going to say, there's a reason you don't see many unhappy dentists. You don't see many driving cheap cars either. Well, no, there were three bloody Range Rovers parked in the in the car park, and only one of them was mine. <laughs> well, there you go. Anyway, so uh, that 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 kind of explains our absences. Uh, I think we got away with it. They probably never noticed, in truth. But uh, we're back anyway. So bad luck. Like I say, I'm actually going to be missing for the two weeks after this one as well. So I'm not sure what uh, what will be in store for you in those uh, coming weeks. I'm there sure something a, will happen. There might be a lot of Gary Dibley. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, because uh, we're actually rebranding VTTV as GDTV now. Mm. So, uh, you know, uh, if you're not sick of him yet, you soon will be. Oh, come on, he's brilliant. <laughs> I, I have to say, <laughs> I, I, I got back on Friday night and I was out all day yesterday. And uh, this morning I thought, right, got to catch up. So I was going through the, uh, the YouTube um uh, the, the VTTV YouTube channel, seeing what I'd missed, 
and uh, and I thought what's going on here because it was dibbly 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 <laughs> dibbly <laughs> so uh, but he's done a fantastic job in the last I, week it seems I don't know how much he's paid YouTube to use his picture of every video <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it was superb. He's did, done a cracking job. So, uh, so my thanks to Gary, and uh, yeah, it was good. I, I, I did actually, uh, and and I won't claim that I watched all of every show because I just didn't have time. But uh, I I did a quick sort of um, uh, scan through most of what we put out this week, and uh, I thought his uh, VT talk was brilliant. Actually, was it Lewis? His mate. Yes, yeah. uh, Keith Mark Two. Keith Mark Two, absolutely. <laughs> yes, what, what, what we didn't realise was he had combat trousers on. Apparently, he's gone home with a lathe, two cameras, uh, half a cherry tree, and a lot of drip tips. I suspect. Apparently so. Yes, yes. <laughs> no, but it was nice, nice to meet Lewis. If you see what I mean, it was good. I'm looking forward to seeing more of him. Actually, it's uh, yeah. a, bright, a bright, fresh, young face. Indeed, indeed, yes. indeed. Okay, well, uh, I mean, as far as uh, you probably gathered that uh, uh, there hasn't been a whole lot of prep time for this show, uh, so uh, we're going to do what what I like to call freestyle. Uh, there are other words for it, but I'm going to use freestyle show. Oh, I call um, it commando. Was that commando? Commando, yeah. Let's let's go, commando. Let it um, swing free. <laughs> No, 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 Craig, it's not really winging it, you know, winging it is when you've got an idea and you have to stretch it out, we're far worse than that, <laughs> so it's, um, you know, ad libarus. It's, it's like the two Ronnies but without a script. Or any humour. <laughs> <laughs> so, no, we, we, there are some things I definitely were. I, because, I, like I say, I mean, I, I haven't been around much uh, for the past couple of weeks, and an awful lot has happened, you know. So, the last time I got to uh, properly catch up on anything was before the Brussels trip, and uh, so I'm definitely going to be wanting to, uh, to to have a quick chat with you about that, Dave. Uh, really, from the point of view of somebody who's only seen the footage, and uh, I thought Marco's little piece that he did was fantastic. Mm -hmm. uh, that went out on Tuesday night. Uh, it was a cracking piece of VT that was. Uh, it really told the story. Uh, we saw the Smoke Without Fire uh, video as well, which, you know, we're starting to now expect a certain standard and we got it. Uh, I, thought, I thought that was absolutely cracking. Um, you know that I was gutted that I, I couldn't make that trip, but I really couldn't. I'd already got flights booked to Switzerland and all the rest of it. There was no way really I could have done it but uh, I'm certainly not going to miss the next one um, but uh, just just before we sort of get into into that if anybody's got anything that they want to chat about in chat just throw it in there and we'll do our best to pick it up between yeah. the two of us we'll probably spot it yeah for once in a while I'm reading it and you'll be able to tell if I'm looking where I'm looking now I'm reading chat okay if I'm, if I'm looking like that I'm looking at you chat's okay. more interesting <laughs> It's actually, when you're reading chat, it looks like you're looking at me. Yeah, I know. And I uh, it doesn't matter what I do. It doesn't look like I'm taking anything in, basically. Oh, God. Craig Boots has asked about lesbian horses. Lesbian horses. It's, um, it's, it's been a while since I've dabbled. But, uh, you, know, you know, I'm a bit rusty, I'll admit. But <laughs> Yeah, this is, this is all to do with Twitter. Oh, I see. Yes, and... Uh, I, I'm, not, I'm just not sure how it got around the lesbian horses, but put, this was something to do with the, the regulation of e-cigs and banning of e-cigs, and you couldn't you couldn't use e-cigs in public places in New York or something along those lines. Right. And so, and I think it was Craig that came back and said, but you can still marry a horse. And I went back and said, yes, but only a female one. So that's where the lesbian horses came from, because obviously if you can only marry a female one and you're female... Yeah, anyway, it's, 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 yes, it's all making perfect sense to yeah, me yeah, now. Yeah. So moving along swiftly, <laughs> um, I, I, on the subject of the Brussels trip, okay, like I say, I saw the videos. It looked like a fantastic day. It looked as though, I mean, I know the vote didn't go the way we hoped it would, but I think deep down we knew that, that people's opinions were preformed before they arrived in the chamber that day to do the vote. 
So, in truth, there probably wasn't much uh, scope for influencing the vote on the day. But hopefully the, 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 the message got through to people for what comes next. There must have been a fair few MEPs who heard about the protest and saw that there was actually some opposition and some viewpoints they hadn't considered uh, when they came out, at least. Uh, but 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 just just taking the, the the event for what it was, and you know you're the best person to put to to, to ask about this kind of thing, really, Dave, because you, you were obviously instrumental in getting everybody over there. Um, what was it like? What was it like to be there on the day? Because I've got this I've got this sense that I've missed a kind of landmark, sort of monumental occasion. I think you have. Um, I think it, it, it's very safe to say that what we saw was a conflagration of vapors of every colour, creed, class, nationality, um, and everybody meeting on the same level. That was the, the, the really kind of interesting part. Everybody that was there, whether they were from Germany, France, Holland, Spain, Italy, Greece, UK, and where the hell else were we? I think it was eight or nine countries represented. Well, I, I, in Marco's video, obviously, the, we saw some Germans, loads of Brits, obviously. Um, uh, there was a French lady interviewed and a Spanish lady and somebody from the Netherlands. Yes. So, you know, I mean, it looked really, really well attended. It was, uh, is the word cosmopolitan? Um, it was, it was it definitely works. that. Um, and everybody swapping notes to the extent that everybody now across Europe is beginning to pull together. And that's that's kind of the watchword, really. Everybody needs to pull it together. We need all to be singing off the same hymn sheet. And certainly on the 10th of July this year, everybody was singing off the same hymn sheet, no matter where we came from. All with exactly the same aim, um, trying to do exactly the same thing. And that, that was to get the world to recognise that these things are a damn good thing and they shouldn't be made medicines because that's going to make them less of a good thing. Um, and it, it spawned a whole host more activity that's, that's going to be happening over the, the weeks and months to come. Um, and I know there's a, a bit of doubt about whether the 31st of August is a good time to do anything in the UK because Parliament won't be back. But that's actually not about Parliament. Um, it's more about the news, it's more about making the statement. It's exposure we need. That's exactly right. And the fact of the matter is, Germany's going on the 31st, France is going on the 31st, the Italians are going on the 31st, and every other country that's getting involved will be going on the 31st, so it's daft for us not to. Um, I know there are other activities being organised, um, and they're, they're fully worth supporting as well. But certainly, whatever's going to go on in London on the 31st, it's got to happen at the same time as Brussels, Dusseldorf, Paris, uh, Strasbourg, and all of the other places where it's all going to come off. That'll be Europe-wide, worldwide, and that's got to be newsworthy. And really, all we need them to do is pick up why we're doing this. Why are we making this noise? Why are we protesting? Why are we so... There's a story in this. For any reporter that's smart enough to pick it up, absolutely. And 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 I, I really do sincerely believe that. I mean, I I was looking because I've got limited internet coverage where I was, but the on the the day of the Brussels balloon job, uh, and the following day, I was looking all over the BBC, and I couldn't find mention of it. And I, I found this incredible. Yes. And, you know, it, it just strikes me that if somebody is uh, sort of bright enough to, to, to seize onto this as a story, there's a huge story in it. I, I think I think you're right. I think you're right. I mean, Sorry. we're going to talk a in a little while about some of the, uh, the, the, uh, the... Yeah, shenanigans is probably exactly the right word, actually, going on in the British Parliament uh, <laughs> about it. But uh, without preempting that too much, you know... The media should be taking much more interest in this. I, yes. I, I firmly believe that. Now, you mentioned 31st of August. For those of us who have had their head in the sand for the last week, i.e. me, what do we know so far? Um, in terms of... In terms of what, what's happening. You said that there's stuff happening around Europe. 
Well, the, this the thirty first of August one is is I'm not I'm not organising the UK one. Um, other other people are, are doing that. That's happening on the forums. It's UKV. It's uh, the all about. It's uh, POTV and and ECF as well. I believe everybody's getting together on there and discussing the whys and wherefores. Um, I'll be out of the country for all of August, so I've got no sure. real way of being able to do much about anything on that one. Uh, I think it's fair to say you've done your bit so far, Dave. Thank you for that. Um, <laughs> there's, there's more to be done yet, and that happens on the 10th of September, but we'll talk about that later. Sure. Um, the, 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 that's, that's kind of the prime focus. Um, there are other areas of focus that need to be taken into account, but the problem now is, of course, that the UK Parliament and the EU Parliament have diddled off. They have gone on holiday. Um some of the MEPs and some MPs are still relatively active. Um, and the ones that are on Twitter, you can find out who they are, where they are and when they are. And, you know, if you can get in front of them, do. But it's it's really all going to kick off, more or less, on August the 31st. That's when everything starts to take place. But, of course, there's one other event that's happening on the 17th of August, isn't it? Uh, yes, just a minor event. Just a small thing. Just down the road from me, he says, punching the microphone there. So apologies to anybody listening with headphones. <laughs> um, let me just move that to safety. There we go. Uh, there is, yes, a small event, I believe, going on in Tamworth, maybe. Yeah. Now, it, it seems to me that's a damn good event to get pressed to. It would seem that way, wouldn't it? I mean, how many are we expecting this year? I've no idea. I'll be I'll be honest with you. I have been a little detached from it all. I've I've exchanged a few uh, private messages with Wayne, uh, looking at what we could do from a VTTV point of view, because I was hoping to get a live broadcast going there, but it looks like perhaps they won't have the bandwidth to do it. Nice. Um, but uh, but certainly uh, we'll be milling around with the cameras. Uh, but beyond that, I don't really know much of what's going on. To be honest with you, I'm just freeloading myself. I'm just going to turn up. Well, I, th I think it would be a damn good idea to get up to as, as much of the press, local and national, as possible. Um, and perhaps, you know, get people, even if they just put a, a little E6 Saves Lives uh, sticker on the, the shirt or, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Um, it, it's a prime, uh, prime opportunity, I think, for press to actually talk to a lot of people and get a lot of views. So if anybody knows anybody that works in the media who might like to get their teeth into a story like that, it's worth letting them know about this. It absolutely is. Actually, Dave, there's barrel loads of stuff coming up. I was just about to bring your attention to it too. Uh, there's a few questions that we're getting in from chat. Um, and, uh, well, first of all, uh, Leanna Lawless is, is drawing our attention to the fact there's a demo at Westminster on the August the 31st. Well, I'm going to research that and, uh, I'm not going to be here for the next couple of weeks. Uh, but I'm sure that the, uh, VTTV guys will not be shy in publicizing anything that's going to happen. Absolutely. Um, uh, certainly I would hope to be up for that. I'm kind of stuck in Switzerland for a lot of it, but I'm going to do my best. Um, a question for Dave Dawn. Can you get Kath Devlin on VT Talk, please? Um, Kath and I talk all the time, and um, we we are cognizant of the astroturfing allegations that have been made. Um, Explain that, Dave. Well, th this whole routine that came out of Paul Murphy, an Irish MEP, who considers that so-called constituents are too well informed um, and are quoting passages from obviously things that ordinary constituents would never read. Therefore, we are being paid for and organized by either, well, mostly Big Tobacco, because Big Pharma never does anything like that, never, ever does anything like that. So we're, we're supposedly, rather than a grassroots organization of of disparate people, all on different forums, all with, uh, and apparently the forums are all funded and set up by Big Tobacco as well. Um, so rather than being a grassroots organisation that's grown organically over the last four and a half, five years, we're being something that's just happened since January, more or less, paid for by Big Tobacco. Um, and, you know, we're, we're, we recognise all of that. And yeah, 
uh, as and when we've got stuff to do, then Catherine will be on. I don't have a problem with Catherine coming on in any way, shape or form, but we are cognizant of the fact that um, it's consumer. The consumers are where the power is. Um, because, again, the, this bloke Murphy, who obviously doesn't have the brains of a squashed cricket, uh, is convinced that Aceta is a front body for big tobacco. Again, and it, it's well, just, you you would hope there was some kind of liable action in that, wouldn't you? Um, well, he, he, what he's done is he expressed an opinion based on evidence that he has shared, and from the viewpoint of libel, uh, because the evidence that he has shared is public knowledge, uh, it's just interpreted wrongly. Hmm. Uh, it's a matter of opinion, and a matter of opinion isn't libelous. Well, I interpret him as being a bit of a twat. That's a matter of opinion. <laughs> it, it's absolutely my opinion. Yeah. In, in your opinion, yes, and, and I have to say it, it's an opinion that I would share with you. Um, the, the bottom line on on a lot of this is that there are people who are capable of making a big noise are busily trying to divide the vaping community. They Indeed. are trying to to bang big wedges in and blow little spats that have happened in the past up out of all proportion, so that divided they can conquer us. And now's the time. Any any kind of skeletons in the closet and stuff like that, we just need to shut the bloody closet doors. Yeah. And, and do what we need to do. We can sort the crap out later. We can have the arguments later. But for now, everybody's got to pull together. No matter who, where, or what, everybody's got to pull together. So Catherine and, and I, we talk a lot. And yeah, um, VT talk, not a problem for that. I've got, I think, two more left before I go on holiday. She's got to have some time off. She's been absolutely working her fingers to the bone. Yeah. And while there's nothing happening in Europe, it's a damn good time for her to get her feet up and get some rest because she's going to need all the strength she can get to carry the battle forward. So I don't kind of want to impose too much on her time. I'm looking forward to getting some time off as well. I'm hoping, though, that I've got a couple of really rather special guests lined up for the next couple of Wednesdays. I'm not in a position to say definitely at this point in time, but I've got agreement from two MEPs to come and talk. Whether we'll be able to do it in the next two weeks, I don't know. Yeah, OK. That, that's that, that's a, a perfectly understandable point of view, Dave. And, and for what it's worth, I agree. Um, the day before the Brussels uh, protest, the demonstration, uh, the WHO, or somebody claiming to represent the WHO, were uh, tweeting... Uh, I don't know whether you saw some of that, and they were tweeting, tweeting absolute lies and rubbish about the uh, safety of e-cigarettes and stuff like that. So, you know, I mean, <laughs> we're up against some pretty powerful opposition, guys, you know. Um, it leads nicely into another question here that came from Media Youth, who's asking, you know, um, and I'm not sure I understand the context of the question. He says, as there are no amendments at the time, how could we inform MEPs? Um, not sure what you mean by as there are no amendments, but to inform your MEPs, and, and you absolutely need to be informing your MEPs, you need to be telling them exactly what you think as a voter, as a constituent, as one of the people that they are supposed to represent, you absolutely need to be telling them what you think is wrong with uh, what the EU are proposing. Uh, you can do this. Uh, it's pretty simple, actually. Uh, what's the name of the website? Write to them. Write to them. dot com or dot co. dot uk. Either one works. There you go. Write to them. dot com or dot co. dot uk. Either one works. You type in your postcode. It gives you the email addresses of your MEPs. You can just sit there and fire off. It's even got a little form where you can where you can uh, write your letter in in email format and it will contact them. And um, they uh, they need to know. They need to know, and uh, you know, in the light of what Dave was just explaining about this whole sort of astroturfing concept, they need to know that real people are concerned about this. Um, it it has it has worked to a large extent. I think about people like Chris Davis and Rebecca Taylor, two MEPs who hadn't got a clue what an e-cig was, uh, and because people contacted them through things like write to them. Uh, they went and found out, and they're 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 they're, they're nailed on supporters of vapors. You know, they were there. They turned up in Brussels. Uh, you can have an effect. 
Um, exactly, exactly the same occurred with uh, Marini and Akudagas. Yeah, um, Martin. Look to be to be absolutely blunt about it. Be absolutely honest about it. On December the nineteenth, when this came out, I contacted my local Conservative MEP Martin Callanan and asked the question straight out: What's the stance? And he said, "I'm against it. I'm against medicinalisation. They shouldn't be included. They shouldn't even be in the TPD. They're not a tobacco product." Right. Um, and I said, "How much support is there for that?" He said, "None." He was the only one. And yeah. as I recall, Rebecca Taylor was all for medicinalisation. She could see absolutely no sense in them being there. Um, and so it went from day one on the 20th of December, there was one MEP that, that was standing our corner. And when it came to the vote on the 10th of July, there was 25. 25. Yeah. Now we've yeah. got to work, we've got to work hard. We've got to work with our own MEPs. It's not now a time to go splattering off at everybody else's. I know Marco has some time booked with uh, Linda McCavin on Tuesday. That'll yeah. be interesting. Th that will be interesting, yeah. yeah. And, and for anybody who didn't pick that up, uh, that that's uh, our very own Mark Green, a.k.a. Marco Van Basten, uh, has managed to get Linda McCavin, who, let's face it, is the enemy in this as far as we're concerned. She's been the main adjutant uh, trying to drive this legislation through. And um, and she's agreed to do uh, an interview with him on camera for VTTV. So um, I, I, I'm very interested to see this. One way or another, I'm going to get to see this as it goes out on Tuesday. I don't know how yet. <laughs> um, but uh, one way or another, I will. Yeah. What was that, Dave? I see a very long piece of wet string tied onto the back of the aeroplane. And that may be it. <laughs> that may be it. Look, uh, we've got a couple more questions. We're going to do our best to uh, to answer those. Uh, and be before I forget, because you know what I'm like, I'm just going to say thanks to Chris in advance for capturing what's going on in chat there and feeding it to us so we can uh, address it all. Uh, but before we do anything else, we've got to take a break. We'll be back in about a minute and a half. And welcome back. Uh, we we were we were almost caught unawares there, weren't we, Dave? Because <laughs> we were busy going through the questions that we've got here. Um, we've got one here that I want to pick up, which came from Ratfinks, and I think it's 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 a really good question actually. And I'll read it uh, verbatim. Is it a good idea to have press at vape fest? If people have a few too many drinks and it's loud and loud and raunchy, is that how we really want to portray ourselves? Also, with alcohol possibility of someone getting wound up and hurting the cause. I think I think that's a really fair question to ask. I mean, I'll throw it to you first, Dave. Um, I haven't really had a great deal of time to think about it, but I, I, I don't know about you, but I've got faith in vapors. Um, I think, quite honestly, if, you, if, if the, the press were made aware that uh, it was on from five till seven, say, um, and then they disappeared at seven to file their stories, then you've got the rest of the night to get ratted. But I also have faith that if anybody is going to get to a stage where they're going to hurt the cause, then other vapors would, would kind of just shuttle them off to one side. 
I, I, I'm unsure as to how true the saying there is no such thing as bad publicity is. Yep. That's the thing. I think at the moment we need all the sympathetic press we can get, um, but I'm quite prepared to accept the drop of sympathetic. I mean, there's been bits that, that folks have uh, shouted long and loud about, certainly on Twitter, but I've looked at and thought, oh my God, that's not me. <laughs> um, you know, and, and, and these, these have been stories that have come from mates in, um, in the States where... Uh, this is this is me being old and, and almost a pensioner, but it's kind of I, I don't see the massive UK vapors having three foot tall more heatings and multiple piercings up the nose. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> and yet those are the kinds of pictures that they're using. That's so, definitely yes, you being old. <laughs> well, it is. It is it absolutely is. But, um, I take on board what she's saying, and yeah, I, 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 I really am in two minds, and that, that thankfully it's not next week end. So there's yeah. loads of time for people to get their heads together and talk about it and work out what the best course of action is, isn't it? Absolutely. You know, and I, I, I personally, my take on that is that it is a valid point. Um, but then at the same time, you know, you, uh, you have to recognise that uh, as the community gets bigger, uh, more more sections of society basically are going to represent, be represented in the community. Uh, it's that simple so uh, not everybody is going to be particularly aware p politically aware and politically astute and yes there'll be a few people uh, probably sort of uh, embarrassing themselves at a social occasion getting drunk but i would say you know that never stopped anybody filming a wedding reception did it or wimbledon or Wimbledon, for or that matter. I think it's right, and and but you know, I mean, I you, you could probably summarise uh, Ratfinks's point there, but by you know, it's a cautionary tale, really, isn't it? It's a it's it's a little bit of a, a little bit of a warning, you know. If we're going to be in the public eye, if we're going to seek to be in the public eye, then yeah, obviously we're going to have to trust people that you know behave respectably. Um, but I, I'm not unduly concerned personally. I, yeah, to be honest with you, uh, if there are reporters there, I don't think they'd be interested in somebody who's drunk making a fool of themselves. They're going to seek out the people who they think are representing and you know, the people who are more articulate. That's the way these things tend to happen. Well, yes, I'm more interested in the raunchy side of this. Yeah, I was going to say, I also have to say, yeah, yeah. Having oh, been to all of the vape fest so far, I missed the raunchy bit. Where, where's the raunch? So, in, fact, in fact, I may start a campaign for more raunchiness and more, more raunch, more raunch and, <laughs> and, and film it. Get it on YouTube. But a damn good point, though. Damn good point, Ratfinks. Damn oh, she good meant, point. She meant raucous, not raunchy. Oh, raucous. Okay. Uh, damn. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I thought, I thought it like, just wishful thinking on our part then uh, then Dave. I, I thought it, I thought it was everybody chucking their atomizers into a ball in the middle of the table <laughs> instead of car keys <laughs> i'm going to uh, move on through the questions and chris is doing a great job here um so alan fletcher says the newspapers in germany are full of reports about some student who allegedly vapes cannabis oil and viagra in his mod the headline is always e-cigarettes are a ticking time bomb i think i'll add my comment there first yes uh there is certainly no shortage of assholes in the world um to be honest with you i agree it's publicity and it's the kind of press that we don't really want to read but anybody that anybody with an iota of common sense is just going to dismiss that frankly aside from which um are they so far behind the times that they don't realise that uh, medicinal marijuana in the States is being used in uh, e-cig type devices as a matter of course? Yeah, it, it, it's not a new concept, is it? It's not at all. And, and the other thing about the Viagra, he's spending his money for now because I tried it. doesn't work. Neither does Cialis. In fact, anything that would help a man with um, flagging abilities, shall we say it, uh, doesn't work in an EC. I've tried. Doesn't trust me on this one. Waste of time. Tablets is the only way. Yes, and it. You know, I mean, um, <laughs> why <laughs> is the first question you've got to ask well, is, is it, why? If he's a I mean, student and he needs Viagra as a student, 
He's drinking too much. Yes, drink less. <laughs> Good God, mate. You know, you what a great answer! Yeah, put him, put us in touch with this guy. We'll sort him out. Yeah. <laughs> All right. The... On a night out, don't you make a choice? You either get leathered or you get laid. But <laughs> doing both, it's just not possible. It's just being bloody green. <laughs> uh, I mean, but there is a slightly sort of serious point in there, though, and uh, particularly about the, the, the using this uh, the using e cigs for illegal substances. I mean, uh, first and foremost, they are not the most efficient way of using this stuff, right? For a start, you know, there was a re when we first started VT TV, right? I always refer to this. I still do now. It's more habit now than a conscious decision, right? But I refer to this as an e cig. I don't call it a personal vaporizer. And and I know Dave is exactly the same school of thought as I was at that time. The reason is you can buy vaporizers and therefore what this plunker is trying to do with an e cig. You could okay. buy, so, buy personal vaporizers long before you could buy e cigs. Correct. I'm talking and, about 1973. I'm told I have no personal. Allegedly. It's allegedly, it's nothing whatever to do with me. Exactly. It's, so yeah. An e cig is actually an extremely inefficient way of of vaporizing any kind of herb. Frankly, there are uh, vaporizers. Uh, you, you don't have to look far. Things like the iolite and stuff like that are just much better at it. So you know, you know, I, I, I dare say, you know, um, <laughs> it's, it is. A, it's a headline that you wouldn't court. It's a headline that you wished you wasn't there. But, you know, nobody's trying to regulate spoons because heroin addicts use them, are they? No, but interestingly, in the uh, harm reduction community and throughout the, uh, the MHRA and NICE and various others, they've just passed bits of guidelines allowing um, the drugs harm reduction units to give out foil so people can chase the dragon rather than inject heroin. Yeah as a safer form of heroin taking. That is harm reduction. It's harm reduction. That's it's harm reduction in progress. Um, another question going down here. I, uh, one very quick one I'll just knock on the head. Winter Rogue is suggesting that we allow smoke without fire. So that's Andy and his boys to do the press work for VF and then we would be safe in the idiot stakes. <laughs> <laughs> um, and he's going to be there. Uh, I don't think wild horses would keep him away. So uh, yeah. So if you're going to vape fest, make sure you've done your makeup, and uh, you're more likely to appear in the video if you're coherent. Although, he, although I got in his last one at your meet, at the knees up. Um, right now, be before we go on and, and do any more about swaf or anything like that, I just need to drop these ones in from Safer Six, right? Uh, the, uh, it's a warning to all that in Viagra will give you a stiff neck. <laughs> um, and from Ego Maniac, he thought that one vaped Viagra to cultivate the traditionally British stiff upper lip. <laughs> that's a stiff neck and a stiff lip. That's no use to anybody, is it? Uh, I basically have no comment on that. <laughs> um, and, and also, I should say that John Kelly wants to know what our favourite juices are. Yes, I saw that comment too. <laughs> so did I. DY4. I have, well, about three quarters of a litre left probably up there that I mixed on an earlier episode. You did. And in my case, it's RY6. It's in there. It's in there. Yeah. I'd, I'd tell you what, I'm going to do a shameless plug now. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to uh, just kick you off the screen for one second there, Dave. Kick me off the screen, Dave. And uh, I'm going to go to camera two. In your place. And uh, I'm going to do a shameless plug here for a friend of mine. This is like a, a mod. Uh, it's, it's a drip tip and atomizer stand made by our very own Mark Jones. Oh, I have that. Of your tip fame. And look at this. These things actually screw into this Perspex sheet. So here's here's a Genesis atomizer. It's also got DY4 in it, and they screw in there really tight. You like DY4? Now Mark uh, didn't ask me to plug his products. Uh, neither did we discuss my royalties. <laughs> However, 
<laughs> I have to say, I picked that up off him at the knees up, and I, I did show it and say I would have a proper look at it, and I just haven't had a chance to look at any of the stuff that I've picked up recently. Um, but that thing is just, I mean, look at it. It's brilliant. These these are all proper screwed in, all these devices. Snap. Where's mine? Nah. Brilliant, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's just absolutely fantastic piece of I kit. Sh I should, should point out for the doubters out there, I did pay for this, all of them. In fact, I got one of every shape he does because I like them. I think they're great. Brilliant. He's flogging them on eBay, apparently. Is he? Oh, they're on it. You can get them on eBay. I, I didn't even know that. Like, I, I, I swear I didn't speak to Mark at all. And, um, oh, yeah, here's another one. DY4. Uh, basically, I mostly vape DY4. I yeah. guess we've uh, answered that question. Uh, <laughs> I, I, uh, I mostly vape. RY6. I can That's beat it. that. I've got a litre of this stuff up there. Yeah, I've got a litre. Well, I've got a litre. And litre. enough to mix another litre. Um, we're having again. <laughs> this is yeah, the concentrate. <laughs> Good Lord above. Um, have you seen this one from uh, FMRL? Um, 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 yeah. Just to play devil's advocate for a moment, for the unaware masses, doesn't the slogan, e-cig save lives, make it sound like a medicine? my honest opinion no not really uh you know driving sober saves lives it's it's no worse than um that beck's alcohol free lager eating the occasional salad instead of burgers saves lives diet coke diet coke caffeine free coffee well it doesn't save lives well, yeah that tastes like crap as well i would never advocate that but yeah, it stops, um, you, stops you going for a wee as well does it See, I didn't even know that, and I've got kidney problems, so I can't drink decaffeinated coffee now. Thanks for that. Well, that's a good reason for that. But you can drink, try dandelion coffee, you'll love it. Dandelion coffee? Dandelion coffee. It tastes like coffee, it's got caffeine in it, and right. trust me, you'll piddle for Britain. Okay. We used to call dandelions piddly bed when I was <laughs> As a, yeah, no, I mean, it's a fair question. And don't think that we've just uh, sort of rubbished the, the comment, because I think it's fair. And you're not the only one that's made the comment. Uh, Chris is doing a cracking job here of pasting in questions and then removing them from the screen as, as, as we're answering them, which makes it a lot easier for us to navigate. So brilliant job, Chris. And and uh, you're not the only one to make that comment tonight. Leon Wallace did as well. She's bothered about E6. Yeah, I I personally, no. I, I don't see an issue with it. I, I, I see it as telling it like it is. Uh, it's factually correct. But I don't think it automatically makes it a medicine personally. But well, I think to I think that's just my personal view. I think it's a slogan they'll pick, a, pick up for the HS2. HS2 saves lives. <laughs> Does it? It would. No, of course it doesn't, but it's a good slogan. <laughs> no, but, bottom line on it is, I mean, it is factually correct. I think um, if you were to have medicinal e saves lives, or Pfizer e save lives, or uh, Smith, Klein, Glaxo, Beecham, Welcome, what yeah, the but, you, but that's making it medical by association, isn't it? Yeah, yeah but this is, this is, this is, there's no association here at all, is there? I mean, it's a, it's a plain, straightforward fact that e cigs while they don't stop anybody from dying, finally, they do give you that extra length of time if, uh, you know, you can use nicotine cleanly. I mean, we could say clean nicotine saves lives. That could be interpreted medicinally, but we're... Yeah, yeah. E cigs and at the moment e cigs are not a medicine. So I don't I don't think I mean there's, I've seen lots and lots of stuff over the last few weeks that make me worry a little bit. Not not kind of cringe or anything, but it's it, it's the old quick word coming back and um, Michael Siegel using words like cessation and various of the studies coming through and saying and people became totally nicotine abstinent a certain proportion of them at the end of the study and stuff like that. I mean, no, yeah, no, yeah. no, 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 it's not about abstinence. It's about not lighting facts. Yeah. Right, well, I'll just just before we take the next break, I'm just going to sum up my feelings on this whole, that, you know, that I just say that's just my opinion, right? You know, that the, the fact is that I'm starting to get less and less patience with people who can't get their heads around the fact that they're not 
fucking medicines. Let's go into a break. And welcome back. Okay, right. So uh, yes, uh, uh, clucking is not a bad word in my book. No. Uh, if it was, if clucking was a bad word, my mother would have belted me for it a long time ago. Yes. Right. Uh, moving on swiftly. <laughs> not what you said, and you know it. Uh, there's a. <laughs> There's <laughs> Blackadder, wasn't it? It rhymes with clucking bell. <laughs> um, I think you're absolutely right. I mean, there are occasions when the, the the blood rises, and there needs to be some kind of vehemence behind the statement. Yes. And I I fully concur with what you said. Oh, there you go. See, so it can't have been that bad. Disco Des Wilkinson is suggesting <laughs> that all VT presenters should wear vaping saves lives t-shirts when on screen and you know what Des you're absolutely right it's just I don't have one but uh, during the break there we saw your comment and I think maybe maybe we can organize some so um, we'll uh, leave that one with us it's a good idea you're right we should we'll get under the team t-shirt or I can wear it underneath my damn shirt you'll sweat <laughs> you'll just sweat more it's well, just I not possible I think, I, think we, I think it would be a damn good idea if we all got it tucked out on our chests. People pay good money to go to health farms to sweat like I do under these lights. Yeah, I, I, let's be honest, I could use it. So, okay, we're moving on. Dazzy's comment won't go away. So, yes, we should have a T-shirt with my penis extending my life. <laughs> I had to read it out so it'll disappear off the list now. Do it, yeah. Chris, do it. <laughs> just keeps reminding us, take it away, please. <laughs> the problem with it is, as you see, I keep seeing Daz's penis. <laughs> oh. Now, there was a comment there, but uh, I can't see it now, which related to, uh, and I forget actually who raised it, so I do apologise, but somebody asked the question, what would happen if the government uh, actually decided to classify e-cigs as tobacco products? You know, they drop the medicine sort of idea. And... Um, Chris liked Dazzy's comments, by the way. <laughs> I'll just put that on record. <laughs> now we can state it publicly. Cat yeah. likes Dazzy's penis. <laughs> Ron, if you're watching. Turn off now. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sorry. So uh, that, no, that, that is a damn good question. You know, uh, there are... There are some people, uh, including some uh, sort of supposedly uh, easing trade industry representatives who think that regulation as tobacco is a good way to go. Uh, we're often very dismissive of it here. Perhaps we don't always say why that, 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 that we think it's a bad idea, because I know that Dave and I, when I say we, I know that Dave and I share the same opinion. Uh, and regulation as a tobacco is not the way forward as far as I'm concerned. Dave, do you want to elaborate? Well, first, let's let's make it perfectly clear 
that the trade association that thinks that tobacco regulation is the best way is Tobacco. Indeed. Um, and as far as I am aware, there are no UK vendors that are now part of Tobacco. Uh, it's very much America centric. Um, and and has nothing to do at all, really. To it, their credit, they reassessed after that opening debate in Brussels. Yes. So yes. it was. It was um, a, we all know who they were. That was T W. Mm-hmm. Um, and after the, uh, the, the the Brussels meeting, um, they reassessed and they came to the conclusion, rightly in my view, that Tveka was not the way forward. Um, and, and, and I commend them for taking that choice. The thing is that um, the likes of Peter Hayek, um, Pelosa, Farsalinos, all of the learned gentlefolk of this world that understand what ACIDs are, they're all more concerned that there is a third way that can be found. Um, and that applies as well to a, a quite a sizable number of MEPs and MPs. Yeah. Um, they are of the view that there perhaps needs to be instituted a nicotine regulatory body, a nicotine regulation agency that regulates everything from cigarettes and any other lit tobacco products right the way down to NRT as it currently stands. Yeah, now, but that, outside of the medical framework. Not part of the, the medicines framework at all. Now, the Royal College of Physicians came up with this in 2007, I think it was. Uh, that's under Professor John Britton. Um, and I know there's an awful lot of people uh, that, that, that have spoken out from the likes of the RCP that are seemingly supportive of med regs. And that's purely and simply because, to my knowledge, and I've got to say to my knowledge, MHRA stuck the boot in and said that just wouldn't work and they were listened to. Because somebody did ask the question earlier on, who's running the country while the MPs are on holiday? Well, it's the same people that always run the country, even when the MPs aren't on holiday. It's the civil service. Yeah. Yes. It's true. So apparently, well, as we've seen, as we saw with Anna Sutton, <laughs> that uh, ass-kicking meeting, obviously, uh, that fella Black tells her what to do. Tell you, let's jump into that, because we're running towards the end of the show, and we can't let that go without comment. The Anna Sue breathing and the civil servant. What an absolute farce that was. Well, yes. <laughs> I just couldn't believe it, you know. I mean, okay, the fact that you put it on the haze hour, the fact that I'd read the captions about a bum kicking before I actually watched the video, I suspected a lot of what was coming. But I, like I say, we're running short on time and there's still some questions I want to get through. Let's let's cut to the quick and the bit that really wound me up about Anna Subri. She didn't know whether e cigs were still in the directive or not, did she? Um, well, now, here's the thing. Um, <laughs> to her right, and less than six feet away from where she was sitting, was one Deborah Arnott of Ash. Yeah. Who is perfectly aware of what the situation was. And why she didn't pass a note correcting the minister. And, and Black knew exactly what the situation was. Why he didn't correct the minister. And why nobody in that room took the time to correct the minister so she could inform the committee correctly. I do not know. It stinks. It, it stinks absolutely out. stinks. Now, but because uh, the, 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 this video is up there, it's on the Hayes Hour. Uh, if you go onto the VTTV YouTube channel, or the Vaportrails.tv website, look in the archives for the Haze Hour and pick the last episode that was dated, what would that have been, about the 17th, 18th? Yeah. 18th of July. Uh, you know, watch that episode and Dave's got a good sort of 25 minutes or so of this session. It, it was basically a parliamentary scrutiny committee and they dragged Subri, who's the, the, the UK health minister, in there to give her a kicking because she went off to Europe uh, and represented the government without getting their, their, their clearance, uh, to get, getting what they called a waiver to allow her to vote the way she believed the government should vote. So ba- to cut a long story short, she voted the way that she thought the country should vote without getting clearance from Parliament. Is that a fair summary? 
That's that's extremely fair. I mean, and she'd been hauled in to this 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 scrutiny committee session to explain what the chuff she thought she was doing. And during the course of this this grilling that she was getting, and she got a proper kicking of of, of the MPs and the committee members in there. Uh, during the course of it, basically showed everybody she hadn't got a clue what she was fighting for. She didn't understand the context and the content of the TPD. She basically done her own thing in the name of the British people without parliamentary go ahead. Now, why the, it goes back to what I was saying before about the protest in Brussels. Why the hell is this not making the news? I think it's treason, actually. It, 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 I'm, I'm sure, you know, OK, I'd have to pick my brains a bit, probably get onto Google, but I'm sure I'm sure MPs have lost their jobs for less than that in the past. She should lose <laughs> her bloody head. You know, I mean, it, it is absolutely scandalous. It's ridiculous. And, and um, uh, you know, and, and, and I think, uh, you know, I mean, we've got to raise the profile of this. We've got to, I, I repeat what I was saying earlier. There are stories here for any reporter that's bright enough to want to make a name here or brave enough or brave enough uh, th yeah. th there's usually a few brave enough I should they're bright you, enough is another matter I, I should tell you that i did resample the whole 57 minutes down having downloaded it via strange means and uh, i sent it to the bbc good so let's see let's, if they do anything with it. Yes, indeed. Indeed. We need to get these other questions, I think, Dave. We'd better move on. Uh, I thought we'd struggle to get through tonight, and we're struggling to contain it. Indeed. There's uh, some questions here about the Royal Mail's thing. Now, I've only read, like, the sort of headline topics on this, and their ban on uh, sort of uh, sending lithium batteries through the post. Dave, are you more clued up on this than me? Because I'm not at all. I'm, I'm sorry to, to admit. Well, I'm, I'm going to go the shortcut route on this one. Um, Royal Mail has got a set of guidelines and instructions that actually don't make a great deal of sense because the talk it's not like them is it not even slightly um, much um, where was <laughs> I yeah they're talking about um, hazardous liquids or poisonous liquids or toxic liquids um, and levels and stuff like that my my take on it is very simple I have discovered via Daz at Safer Six, who's getting a hell of a lot of mentions tonight. He's now using a courier system, courier service, that's costing no more than Royal Mail. And they couldn't give a tuppenny toss what he said. And seriously, honestly, best thing any vendor can do is, uh, is go <laughs> to the Royal Mail and get one of his cheap courier services. And yeah. then nobody's left in any doubt. Because it it, 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 it it is entirely coincidental and it's got nothing to do with what's going on in the EU or anything to do with e -seeks. It is entirely coincidental that they're trying to get the Royal Mail tarted up to sell it off. So they're putting all this in place so that it's all there ready for when the new people buy in and then they're not going to have any bother with them. That's, that's the bottom line on it. But seriously, they, they can't stop you from buying an iPad mail order because it's got the batteries built in. And if you're buying it and there was a spare battery for it, then you could have two spare batteries in the same package. Yeah, and yeah. Down to what they consider to be a device. Now, some post offices couldn't give it up and you toss, they just take the parcel, take the money, chuck it in the bag and off it goes. Yeah. If you're just a, a one-off, that's likely to be the case. If you've got 20 or 30, then the pensioners behind you in the queue waiting to get their money out of the bank are going to have a hell of a long wait because they'll be... What's in this one? Is there any toxic liquids or hair curlers or batteries or gas? To which or... you'll say, no. no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, point taken. Yeah, okay. Now, that, that that was pretty much the sense of what I got, like I say, but I hadn't really sort of looked into the subject at all. So thank you for that. I think we've got time for one more. And, and apologies because we could have gone on, but uh, we've run out of time. And actually, th this is a good one to end on. Uh, Parrotflux says, what are you guys doing when the cameras go off? Is there a VTTV after hours? Dave, what do you do when the cameras go off? And keep it clean. Oh, yeah, that, that's pretty much answered for you then, hasn't it? I can't, can't say anything. <laughs> when, when the cameras go off, uh, after I've been doing a full show in here... Uh, it becomes I, Davina. Kind of, yeah, yeah. I go to the Big Brother house and uh, do all sorts of nasty... No, <laughs> what, I do exactly the same as Dave does and exactly the same as Marco does and Gary and everybody else. 
I gather the recording together that we've done locally, I prepare it for upload to YouTube, then I upload it to YouTube, and then I ensure that it's uploaded successfully and been converted on YouTube, and then Chris, Kat, uh, embeds it on the website, and we tweet it, and we make sure everybody's aware that it's there. By that point in time, I am generally bereft of liquid, and so I, uh, I rehydrate in a manner that's traditional amongst English gentlemen. It usually involves an amber or brown liquid, perhaps with some alcohol in it. Ah, it depends which gentleman you're thinking of. Yeah, well, that's a subject for another show in its own right. Uh, yeah, and yeah, that, that's pretty much what we do. There'll be another sort of half an hour to an hour of sort of post-processing of what I'm recording here at the moment, uh, so you, so people can watch it on catch up. And then, in my particular case, I go to bed because that's the kind of wild guy I am. I go to bed and then I get up early and catch up playing. I go out so, clubbing with uh, e cigs full of Viagra. Oh, I do all that as well, of course. Yeah, you know, it don't work. I do all that as well. Then I catch a play. I wake up with a stiff neck. <laughs> <laughs> Dave, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on the show again. Uh, uh, like I say, uh, I'll, where's the camera? There it is. It's over there. I'm not going to be around next week. I'm actually, uh, you know, I, I, I know I haven't been around on VTTV, but trust me, I've not been taking it easy for the past couple of weeks. Next week I am. I'm having a weekend away with my missus. Uh, and then the weekend after that, I'm going to a dunk gig. Film it. So, Film it the weekend away with the missus. Film it. I'll ask her. <laughs> <laughs> you never know. <laughs> I've got a good Kat's idea, just, though. Cats just asked, can we remind everybody that on the recent show page, the full copy of the Subaru meeting is up there? There you go. I didn't even know that, but you just did, Dave. So oh, thank you for that. Yes, oh, and, and I will seek that out. I'm actually not flying until Tuesday morning, but uh, I've got an early start in the morning to keep Swiss hours. So... Um, we it's you. been a pleasure to have you on again. We've got to go. We've, My pleasure, mate. We've overrun a bit. Okay. Ooh, we have as well. <laughs> What's, what can she do to us? Nothing to you, but she just lives up the road from me. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for watching. Good night.